Okay, so here we go. What is a zero? A zero is just another way of saying what are the roots. Okay, that doesn't help us out any. Um, what are the answers? Okay, great. Well, that doesn't really help me out any. But the answers to a quadratic are located where the parabola intercepts the x-axis, where it crosses the x-axis. And so it crosses the x-axis here. And it also crosses the x-axis here. So now all we have to do is just look and see which answer choice is true. So did we have any of the graph cross the x-axis between negative 9 and negative 8? That's way over here. Did the graph cross over there? No. What about between 1 and 2? Did the graph cross between 1 and 2? Doesn't look like it to me. That looks like the axis of symmetry. What about between negative 7 and negative 5? No, that would still be the, on the extended blue line. There's no crossing of the graph. And then that just leaves us to the last one here. Do I have a crossing between 4 and 5? Yes. There we go. So our answer is D. All right, so in this problem here, they're just asking you what is a solution to this quadratic if they give you this table. So g of x is the same as saying y. And for you to have an x-intercept of that crosses the x-axis, it has to have a y of 0. So they tell you if you have a y of 0 and 1 is an answer, we'll look for another 0 and you'll see that it crosses there at 3. So you just have to look for the zeros. You're looking for where the y's are zeros. And that's where it crosses the x-axis. In this problem here, it's just asking you which statement is true. So we have to type all these into our, our calculator. In fact, it's asking you which statement is false. So let's look at for all the ones that are true. Okay, so we graph them. So the graphs of these two functions have a minimum. A minimum, that means it, it has two low points. Do you see two low points? Doesn't look like it. It looks like we have two high points. That's not going to be our answer. What about the same axis of symmetry? Yeah, it looks like that could be true. So we're going to go put a question mark next to the one, the ones that we think are true. Because in this problem here, it's not asking what is true. It's asking for what is false. The graphs of these two functions do not cross the x-axis. The graphs of two. Do I have two of them that don't cross the x-axis? That is true. I do have two that don't cross the x-axis. I have one that's going up above the x-axis and one that's going below. So that's actually true. I, could, I circled it as a yes, but it's really a question mark here. And then the graphs of these functions have different y-intercepts. Are they all three located at different places on the y? Yes. So that's also true. But go back to the question. The question is asking you which one is false. So the one we crossed out is actually our answer, A, because we're looking for the one that's not. All right. In this one here, all you had to do was punch this particular equation in your calculator. That P of X is just a fancy way of saying Y equals. So we're going to clear everything out, punch this in the calculator, and then all we're going to do is see which table matches up to this particular graph here. So go to your table, 2, 1. If I look at 2, 1, all the tables have 2, 1. But what about 3, 3 on this one? Well, yeah, I see 3, 3, but I don't see 7, 22. I see 7, 21, so that's not going to work. How about 4, 6 for letter F? Yes, I see 4, 6, but how about 9, 28? Do I have 9, 28? No, that's 8, 28. So that's not going to work. All right, let's look at this one here. 8, 28 works. Do I have 5, 10? Yes, 5, 10 works. Do I have 2, 1? Yes, 2, 1 works. Let's see if I have 12, 66. And 12, 66 works. And so that's all you had to do on that one. You're just matching up the table. All right, so we punched in the equation. Translate means to move. So we're going to look at the original graph here that we punched in our calculator. And then let's move it, or let's shift it seven units down. So that's what the original looks like. So which answer choice would shift this seven units down? Well, if you go seven units down from where it's at, 
it'll put that vertex at negative 5. So you're just counting 7 units down. So you just find the answer choice that's going to be at negative 5 here. And so I know it's going to be either C or D. And it looks like D is a little too far below. So our answer is C. All right, same thing here. Punch this in the calculator, and let's see what's which one of these is true. The equation has x equals 4 as its only solution. Solutions are where they cross the x-axis. Did it only cross the x-axis at 4? No. Remember what no real solutions mean. That means they don't cross, that the graph doesn't cross the x-axis, and this crosses the x-axis twice. So let's see if it crosses at 4 and negative 4. Yep, you can see right there it goes 4 to the right, which is positive 4, 4 to the left, which is negative 4. So that those are our answers where they cross. Okay, on this one you're just extending out where you believe that this part of the parabola is going to cross. So what I do is I look at the vertex. Because the vertex is going to give me my axis of symmetry. And the distance that I have on the left of the parabola from the axis of symmetry, which looks like about four and a half, needs to be the same distance on the other side. So if I go four and a half more, I should be like around nine-ish. And so I'm looking for an answer choice that has nine-ish in it. There you go, 9.2. And you can extend that down and you can see there that it would cross around nine and some change as well. Look at that, no work.